So in today's video, I'm going to get into a topic that might hit a little bit too close to home for the most of us. Now, I read an article by Dan Murray on social media over the weekend, and it got me thinking about my personal situation and some of my bad habits that were holding me back in years gone by. Now, I'm going to be talking about the eight behavioral habits that I changed, which allowed me to turn my life around and which might also be holding you back financially or even worse. So if you're ready to follow some of these examples and you're willing to try to turn your financial life around, you're in the right place. So let's get started. And welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time, a very warm welcome to the Economies channel, where together we're going to be learning the language of money and wealth. We're also dedicated to mastering money and making financial wisdom available to all. Hi, my name is Simon and I'm a chartered financial planner here in the UK. Now, I can't seem to get away from these famous quotes on this channel. So here is an absolute cracker from Thomas Jefferson. Now, if you want something that you've never had before, you need to be willing to do something you've never done before. Now, the first and the most important step is to make yourself a very small promise and make sure you stick to it. Now, this can be a very small promise that is just so easy to do. It'd be an absolute embarrassment if you manage to break it. So how about simply watching the video to the end and then make yourself a promise to action just one of these eight positive habits. Now, the first bad habit was not investing enough. Now, this is a common mistake, especially if you feel that you don't have enough money to start your investing journey. But here's the thing. Investing even small amounts of money can lead to substantial growth over time, thanks to the magic of both compound interest and patience. Now, according to a survey by the Financial Conduct Authority, or FCA here in the UK, only about 8% of adults aged between 40 and 65 invest outside of their retirement savings. So if you're not investing, you're missing out on potential gains that could massively secure your future. Now, the recent budgets in the UK meant that national insurance was reduced not once, but twice from 12% down to 10%, and then again from 10% all the way down to 8%. Now, what that means is someone on the average wage in the UK of just over £35,000 a year is now going to be paying £900 a year less in national insurance contributions. Now, if you're one of those employees, what have you done with your extra £75 a month? Now, of course, investing is not just about putting money away for the future or creating wealth. It's also about investing in yourself by learning new skills or learning new technology or even starting a side hustle. Now, Warren Buffett told a beautiful story to a group of school children in America. And it's all about imagining that you were able to have absolutely any car you wanted delivered the next day, even with a bow tied around it. You could have any car, any color, no limits. But the catch was that would be the only car you would ever have in your lifetime. So can you imagine how you would look after that car and how you would maintain that car? Well, that's the very same with both your body and your mind. So make sure you look after both of them as these are the only ones you're ever going to get. Now, I know investing can be a very emotional experience. So here's a chart from our friends at Vanguard about investment returns over a long term for what's called a 60-40 portfolio. And that is broken down to be 60% in stocks and shares and 40% in bonds. Now, this data goes back to 1901. So it currently covers over 123 years of data. Now, the average return was 7.77%, and that generated 27 negative years, but 94 positive years. So that's a 76% rate of positive years of returns and that reinforces the very famous saying, so it's time in the markets that's important and not timing the markets. Now, a study by Barclays reported that people in the UK spend an average of £200 a month on impulse buys. That's £2,400 a year that could be contributed either into your pension or into your investments. So that brings us to the next bad habit, and that's impulse buying. So before making a purchase, ask yourself, is it something that you need or is it something that you want? Then allow yourself 24 hours at least before buying anything with a value above £100. 
Now the chances are the urge to buy that article will actually pass. Another top tip is don't mix alcohol with credit cards at night or you could end up with a purple onesie. Yeah, don't ask, I'll save that for another video. Another tip is to make sure you use cash instead of credit cards and set yourself a realistic financial limit before you go out to buy. Now remember, if you do see something on offer reduced from 200 pounds to 125 pounds, for example, you've not saved yourself 75 pounds, you've actually spent 125. Now the next bad habit was something called lifestyle inflation. Now, in my case, this happened gradually and went kind of unnoticed until I realized that I wasn't saving enough for my future and I seemed to be permanently broke despite promotions, professional qualifications, bonuses, pay rise, and even some crypto coins doing well. Now, it was fun at the moment, but started to hinder my long-term financial growth. So, for instance, upgrading the car every two years, building and replacing the watch collection, building an extension or even completing home renovations every few years kind of kept me in a constant state of debt. So what you need to try and do is follow something, the 50, 30, 20 method, where 50% of your income is used for the boring essential expenditure like utility bills, council tax, etc. Now 30% is for the more exciting lifestyle spending such as dining out, entertainment, holidays, etc. And that leaves 20% for long-term savings, either into your pension, your investments, or even to reduce any debt that you might have. Now, Charlie Munger said, the world is not driven by greed, but by envy. So learn to enjoy what you have and not what you haven't. Now, the next bad habit was living and having to deal with constant debt. Now, the FCA Financial Lives Survey came out in 2022, and it highlighted some of the very shocking statistics. 33% of us put off dealing with financial matters. 12.3 million adults in the UK are concerned about the effect that debt has had on their mental health. 4.2 million people said that debt created loneliness and they felt that they had nowhere else to turn. To put those figures into perspective, the average unsecured debt in the UK is about £11,000. And that surprisingly is an increase of 30% since the pandemic. And the total UK debt, that's excluding mortgages, of course, is reported to be around £215 billion. So to be clear, if you have an £11,000 credit card debt at an average interest rate of 20% per year, and you decide to pay the minimum balance of £200 a month, it will take almost 13 years to clear your debt. So just think about that for a minute. Now, if you are struggling with debt, I'm going to link the contact details for Step Change, which is the UK's largest debt charity in the description below. So if you're finding value in this video so far about trying to form some positive financial habits and learning from some of my mistakes, then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Now, the next habit is one which actually drove me and inspired me to start the Economies channel. Only 57% of UK adults passed a basic financial knowledge test according to the Money Advice Service. Now, according to the FCA, about 50% of UK adults have a numeracy age of an 11-year-old or under, and 15% of UK adults have literary skills below that of an 11-year-old. So just let that sink in for a minute. So what we need to do is make sure you educate yourself. There are plenty of free resources online, including this channel, various workshops on personal finance, all available for you online. Now, the information available to you has exploded over the last 10 years, and there are various commentators which have perfected the art of making noise, but without saying actually anything of use at all. There's also so much clickbait around to distract you from what is important. So you need to learn to read, and to assess information taken from various independent sources. And there is a relentless focus on the doomsday financial porn to grab the headlines and also to misdirect you. So be very wary of what you're listening to and what you're watching. If you'd like me to list the top 10 financial books that I've read that's managed to change my life going forward, 
then drop me a comment in the section below. I'm going to put that video for you with pleasure. Now, the pandemic showed us that unexpected things happen. So it's really important to have multiple income streams. And that is something that I did not have before. So have you considered a side hustle, writing ebooks, for example, a training course or a manual, starting a YouTube channel like I have, or even turning a passion into a project? What about a hobby into a side business? How about investing in rental properties or even picking up some freelance work relative to your specific skills? Now, a combination of those might help you get more income to allow you to save for a more secure future as well. Now, another bad habit that I had was FOMO, the very famous fear of missing out. So social media, marketing and advertising in general can make us all feel that we need to have the latest gadgets to go on the most exotic holidays, drive the fancy cars, or even to eat out every weekend. Social media is a fantasy world. It's just make-believe with all the best filters applied to make it sound even more better than it actually is. Many people do believe that they're missing out on unforgettable experiences that others may be having, which is leading to their anxiety, regret, as well as resentment. And these can come with a financial cost and an emotional burden. So remember, Every pound you spend on keeping up with the Joneses is a pound not spent on your future and protecting your family. So a top tip would be to try to unsubscribe from tempting emails, unfollow celebrity accounts that may trigger your spending patterns, and set realistic personal and financial goals to keep you both disciplined and focused on the future. Another bad habit was not knowing my own personal audit. And by that I mean, I needed to know what my gross income was, but also my net income per month. I needed to know the ins and outs of my monthly expenditure, both essential and lifestyle. My mortgage details, including the amount that was outstanding, the interest rate, and when the mortgage needed to be reviewed. That would also include my workplace pension contributions and my investment contributions, as well as the current fund values. What was my savings rate? And by savings rate, that's the amount you save divided by your income. Now, are you close to that 20% we talked about earlier in the video? I also need to know what my assets and my liabilities were, and that would help me create my net worth, which is basically what you own minus what you owe. So do you know your life by your numbers? Now, knowing all this technical information keeps me on track and allows me to know how many steps I'm taking toward reaching my own personal goal. So in conclusion, changing any bad habits aren't going to happen overnight, but with consistent effort, you can transform your financial health just as I did. Remember, it's not just about earning more, but managing what you have more effectively. If you found value in me sharing some of my bad habits and now changing these habits into more positive habits to my financial and my personal life around, then please give this video the thumbs up, hit the like button, as well as the notification bell, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any valuable content in the future. Now that will help me get this financial wisdom out to a much wider audience. And finally, this is your channel, and this is your voice. So if you've had a positive experience, or even a negative experience about managing money, or even overcoming some of your bad habits, then let me know in the comments below. We can share your story and we can all learn together. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. And I look forward to seeing you next week where we're going to be discussing all things workplace pensions, default funds, lifestyle pensions and withdrawals. See you all next week. Thank you so much.